Good morning. So here I am. I'm all happy. I'm all excited. I'm gonna have my morning cup of coffee with you and my coffee mug breaks while I'm in the middle of drinking it. Spills everywhere. The handle just falls clean off, splashes all over my lap, gets all over the rug, all over the floor, all over the little thing underneath the counter, and of course like splashes into my face, splashes my bangs, it's a whole mess. So thank god the coffee wasn't like totally steaming hot, otherwise I would have had a McDonald's incident, if you remember. For those of you old enough, maybe I'm aging myself. It was very... Ah. It was very frustrating. So anyhow, hi, hello, good morning, good morning. Oh, my chair is kind of squeaky, kind of squeaky. So, so, I've been wanting to do more regular videos for a while, but you know, I made a name for myself as a beauty blogger and in the past couple of years have been tiptoeing into the travel waters and being more of a travel blogger. But that's not who I am anymore. You know, that's part of who I am. That's a little compartment of who I am. And one of the reasons that I've been struggling so much the past couple of years, I think, is because now there's this whole new world of beauty bloggers and they're all 18 and they're all applying makeup on camera. And, you know, I don't know how to compete with that. I can't compete with that. I don't want to compete with that. I'm 34 years old. Um, there are enough 18 year olds on the internet, God bless them, you know, more power to them, they are amazing. But here I am in my own little corner of the world, being 34 years old, and feeling like, okay, well I have something to say too, but not just on beauty, on travel, and on royalty, and on books, and on friendship, and on life, and la la la, and on all these things that I want to talk about. And I felt kind of like, Mrr, scrunched into my little corner of the world, so I decided, screw it! You know, I'm just going to do the kind of videos I want to do again, which are sort of rambly and sort of talking about this and talking about that and, you know, not necessarily organized. Um, although that is where the genius of editing comes in because I can edit myself after the fact, like this and like this and edit out all my so's and my ums and my exactly's and my likes and, you know, all of the little quirks in language. But anyhows, that's one I overuse a lot. Anyhow, I'm excited to be back to doing regular videos again. My hope is that I will be doing one video every Monday. And I was thinking, and you know, you'll have to sort of bear with me because I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. But I was thinking that I might do one video a week on beauty products, one video on sort of writing and my writing process, um, one video on my personal life, and then maybe one video on travel. I don't know, I haven't really figured that out yet, but. So I think, uh, so I think this week it will be a little personal video. The annoying thing is I can't talk to you about some things that are going on in my life yet um, because of the show. So we're going to have to put certain topics on the shelf. We'll come back to those later. But I do hope you have your DVRs recorded. Um, the show, which is Newlyweds the First Year, is supposed to debut March 10th, which is a Tuesday at, I think, 10 p.m. on Bravo. Um, and obviously, you know, it also plays, I think, three hours earlier, so it should also be playing at 7 p.m. on Bravo. Very excited. We'll see what happens. Blah, blah, blah. I have no idea. Anyhow, the main thing that is going on in my life right now that is work-related um, is my book. And so as you might know, if you follow my blog, bing, is I sold my book. So I've been working on this book for like three years and the initial concept was actually, um, it was kind of like Kate Middleton's story, but obviously fictionalized and me taking as many liberties as I wanted to. And then eventually the concept uh, evolved over the past few months to just be, you know, what if this were through the lens of a Pippa-esque character, a little sister who's kind of a tag along. And evolved, evolved, evolved. And so now basically the story is two sisters at boarding school competing for the love of a prince. So it's due to be published in winter 2017. And that's the crazy thing. Um, you know, I don't think that a lot of people realize how long the publishing process takes. You know, you get your book deal if you're lucky, which takes a million years. And that's after you've finished writing the damn thing, which takes a million years. And then finally you get to the point where you sell the book. Hooray! So exciting! Bah! And that it doesn't get published for like nine years. 
That's basically the exact same thing that happened to me with my last two books, Beauty Confidential and Confessions of a Beauty Addict. Buy them now. I wrote the books. Actually, I got the book deal. I wrote the books, which took a long time. And then they were published several years later. And by the time they were published, it was basically like old hat. So, you know, I think that's why a lot of people get glamorized by the idea of online publishing and being able to go straight through someone like, let's say, Amazon and just publish your book, get it out there, boom, because as soon as you're done writing it, you can basically, you know, upload it to the interwebs and have it be out there. And I've also heard that if you're self-publishing, you can get the money inside of like a month, which is crazy. You know, for me, like I signed my book deal and it took several months for me to see any money. And that's usually only half. So typically you get half when you sign and then you get half when you deliver, which is however many months or even years later. The schedule I have for writing is a whole nother bag of tricks. I have... Let's see, it is early February right now, and the book is due May 1st, so I have just under two months to finish it. And typically most people sell books, or sell fiction books when they're totally done. In my case, I sold a fiction book on a partial, which means that I wrote like a quarter of the book and then wrote a long proposal explaining in lots of depth what was going to happen at every step of the way, um, and I managed to sell the book on that. It's like a 30-page proposal, so it's not just one page of saying, hey, and then they kiss, and then they go to Greece, and then they get married, and then there's a horse, and blah. It's very, very, very in-depth to the point where you even maybe have dialogue in the proposal. So I put that together, took me months, was able to sell the book on that concept. But of course, because I sold it on a partial, I still have to finish writing the damn thing. So I have two more months left. I have, I think, 11 chapters left to finish. And I figured out if a chapter is about 12 pages, that works out to about two or three pages a day. Totally doable, not that difficult. Um, would have been difficult for me 10 years ago, but now I am much more of a professional writer. And so it's a lot easier for me to hit that pace. Um, as long as I actually keep pace. So that's the problem is, you know, if you have other things going on in your life, if you have a personal life, if you don't hit your two pages, well then you're four to six pages late and that's just the next day. And then the next day it's, you know, eight to 12 and it's like, it spirals. So it's really important to hit that two to three pages every single day. And that can be tough. You know, you'll write, but it won't necessarily be great. It might just be crap on the page. And one of my good friends in New York, a million billion years ago, gave me really good writing advice where he said, don't be afraid to write badly. And that's similar advice that has been given by Stephen King in his book on writing. This is one of the best writing manuals out there. It's also part memoir. But I highly recommend, even if you don't like Stephen King, I'll be honest, I don't really read Stephen King. I haven't read very much Stephen King. I think I read Carrie when I was like 14 years old and I hated it. Did not like it. Um, but this is an absolute classic. I, it's, I cannot recommend it more highly. This is like the book if you want to be a writer, if you want to write fiction. I think he might be the one that says write with the door closed. Um, that could be someone else. I don't know, I'm probably getting it confused, all of those little memes floating about, you know, inspirational writing tips and quotes and things like that that you find on Facebook. Another really great book is called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Another writing classic. Get it, read it, love it. It is fantastic. So any person who's giving anyone writing advice, who knows what they're talking about, will tell you you can't be afraid to write a really, really crappy first draft. It's just you gotta get it on the page. Not every writer is like that. Some people edit as they go and those people tend to take a decade to write their novels because editing as you go is really difficult. What I've typically found the easiest, and I know a lot of other writers will probably agree with this, is writing that crappy first draft and then putting it away. Walking away from it, taking a break, and just giving yourself the chance to process and kind of take some time to get some space and distance from it. Then you can go back to it, whether it's a week later, a month later, a year later, you know, even several years later. You can go back to that book, you can reread it with fresh eyes, and you're typically able to see what's wrong with it and see where you need to tighten it up, where you need to make edits. If you have to cut out entire scenes or chapters or even characters, which I've had to do over the years, um, giving yourself a little bit of space in between 
writing that first draft and the second draft really, really helps in terms of making it as strong as possible. Right now, I am just struggling to finish that first draft, racing to the deadline. I have less than two months left. And, you know, I know I'm going to do it, but it is definitely stressful. And so I am just chugging away. Obviously not writing right now. I'm making a video instead. But, you know, your life has to keep going as well. So, say la vie. And now I must get back to my very sad, broken cup of coffee. Mwah, mwah. Gonna have to find another coffee mug. Well, thanks for watching. As always, you can find me on my blog at NadineJolieCourtney.com. And you can find me on Instagram at at NadineJolieCourtney, at NadineJolieCourtney. And you can find me on Twitter at NadineCourtney. So thanks for watching. Bye. And so I pull out the equipment and of course, like the camera is not charged and I have to go find a new battery pack. And then I was like, where the hell is the tripod? And then I was like, screw it. I don't need a tripod. So that's why I'm sitting here on my bed kind of like, hunched over like, woo, okay, that's a weird, that did not need to happen. <laughs>